everyone, welcome to another edition of The Morning Serve. Emma Lawrence alongside John Millman. John, let's firstly talk about Daniil Medvedev and his last match finish after 3.30 in the morning. Take us through what actually happens at that stage. What time is he getting to bed? Does he still have to ice bath? Well, first of all, he would have gone through all the emotions mm. even getting onto the court because we're going to touch on it later. That tie break went forever. So he even made mention that he was tired before he got <laughs> on the court. After the match, he would have, it would have been business as usual. Mm. He's hitting the ice baths. He's getting his massage. He wouldn't have got to bed till around 5, 5.30, I'd imagine. Um, but look, the positive is he's got another day and a half to prepare. I'd be very surprised if the organisers at the Australian Open wouldn't have him on a night match tomorrow, so he'll have maximum time to recover. And I think you've got to ask yourself the question, would he have rather had the match cancelled and come back today to play? Mm. Or would, would he rather that, that day and a half preparation? I think he would have chosen the latter, the day and a half preparation. Do you think it will genuinely affect him when he goes out onto the court up against Felix auger Eliasim? I mean, this game is about small percentages, so yeah, potentially it will. But he's been in this position before. He's so experienced. Um, he's the type of person mentally, he's always quite strong, even though we saw him <laughs> outburst with a little bit of emotion <laughs> last night. But he is so strong mentally. I think he'll bounce back and he'll be absolutely fine and ready to go in what promises to be a really good matchup against Felix. If you are Felix, are you trying to poke the bear a little bit and play on those emotions knowing that he's exhausted and might be easily rattled? I think if you're Felix, you come out of the blocks, mm. all systems firing. You want to show, even if you don't feel it, you want to show a bit of bravado, you want to look fresh, you want to be jumping up and down, mm. a little bit like we see with Rafa in his yeah. pre-match. I'd be jumping through the roof, and Felix would see this as an opportunity. There's no doubt in his mind that he'd be trying to use this to his advantage. And in terms of the late finishes in general, is there anything we can do to prevent them? I mean, when you have matches beforehand going five sets, is there anything we can do? I think we've tried to do everything possible. We did start the day earlier on Sunday. This is live sport though. I think to an extent that will reduce the amount of nights that we have those late night finishes. But every now and again, you're going to have matches that go for a long time. That's live sport, that's tennis. So for then Medvedev coming in, biggest battle? Is it the physical side or the mental side do you think coming in? I think probably more so that mental side. You know, he wants to wipe the, the fact and not have any excuses in the back of his head. So he wants to get that out of his mind. He wants to, to, to come out there, not have any excuses and really back himself to go out there and win. All right, let's talk about Kasper Ruud for a moment. Uh, another epic five-setter against Max Purcell. Do you think Kasper Ruud's been really building for this? I mean, Max Purcell put up a great fight, but where do you see Ruud at at the moment? Well, first and foremost, Max Purcell was brilliant, mm. and it's the type of matchup that Kasper Ruud would have hated mm. because Max Purcell, he has so much variety. He serve volley, he chips around his forehand and backhand at time. Kasper's the type of player that likes rhythm. He's grown up on clay. He wants to play those physical types of matches. Mm. So... He did a really good job of escaping that one. And I want to say Max Purcell was brilliant. I think he's starting to get back to his best form though. He's got one of the best forehands on tour. And if the conditions are like this and nice and cold, I think he'll be able to find that forehand more often. Do you see him building and even to the point where he can get to that number two, number three in the world? I think it's there for the taking. Mm. Obviously, there's Novak Djokovic, mm. Carlos Alcaraz, Yannick Sinner. I think after that, it's anyone's ball yeah. game. And in terms of Max Purcell, he mentioned after the match, um, and rightly so, that men's tennis, particularly in the male draw, is in an amazing spot at the moment. We came in with 15, which is the most we've had in a long, long time, since 1998. Do you agree and think it's just in an incredible spot at the moment? I don't like to admit that we're being dominated by the when New you're... South Welshman too, because <laughs> there's eight or nine in the top 100 from yeah. New South Wales, and being a passionate <laughs> Queenslander, I don't like this. Let's not mention that. But I do think men's tennis is in a great spot. Look, I think we were a little bit unlucky with some of the draws we were dealt. Mm. Otherwise, I think we'd see more than one person progressing to the third round, who's Alex Dimonar. But you have to remember, Thompson had a great match against mm -hmm. Tsitsipas. Kokonakis played incredibly well against Dimitrov. Max Purcell, we've talked about it, mm -hmm. five sets with Kasper Ruud. And Alexei Popperin, who can forget that he mm -hmm. took Novak Djokovic to the wire. So I think if the draws were a little bit kinder, we would have seen some of the Australians progressing a little bit further. But it's strength in numbers, and we got the numbers right now. Absolutely. And one of the best matches we've seen all tournament, that epic tiebreak, 22-20 between Blinkova and Rabakina. <laughs> I mean, Blinkova, have you ever seen anything like it? 
Well, I haven't, and neither has this <laughs> tournament because that is the longest tie break in Australian Open history. And you know what? Pre pre tournament, I was thinking Rabakana was the favourite for this whole event. And at the end of that match, I was going for Blinkova so much. She had it on her racket a few times. It was so good to see her over the line. She was so emotional at the end of the match. I was so happy for her. I know Medvedev wasn't so happy. He yeah. wanted it to finish. But that was an awesome display of tennis and an awesome display of, of holding your nerve. Yeah. That quarter of the women's draw seems to have really opened up. So um, Blinkova, Sloane Stephens, Zhang... Really, any of them could end up in a in a semi final against Iga Swiatek. Who do you you like out of? Well, not just Iga yeah. Swiatek. There's a couple yeah, more in that yeah. other quarter. I like Quinn Win Zhang. Yeah. I think she is on the rise. Her career trajectory is just like this. It it is going through the roof right now. Keep an eye out for her. And wouldn't that be big for Chinese tennis? Mm -hmm. They they are the sleeping giant of tennis right now. China. They've invested a lot in tournaments and in their players. Keep an eye out for Quinn Win Zhang. Well, Iga did actually mention after her match and really getting pushed that she ha she was already at the airport, so she'd sort of checked out already. Where do you think that says she's at mentally, that she's admitting she not checked out but had some doubts? First of all, I think she becomes the player to beat still. I reckon use that as a positive. Yeah. Use that as a positive. Think that I've got a second chance here. Let's go out ahead now and let's swing freely and let's play with a bit of freedom. I think she'll use it as a positive. She's now the one to beat, in my opinion. But is she, if you're one of the other players, are you thinking she's vulnerable? I'll tell you what, there's a bit of scar <laughs> tissue with the other players because yeah. she has opened up a bakery. She loves bageling them. <laughs> I'd be worried. I'd be, I wouldn't be poking the bear, Iga Svartek. She is a phenomenal tennis player. I think probably one of the best athletes on the, fee, on the women's tour. Mm -hmm. Watch out. I would not ride off a champion, and she is a champion. So up against Linda Noskova then, you're backing her to do it and maybe with another bagel? <laughs> I don't want to disrespect <laughs> Noskova that no, much, no. but she does have a yeah. history of bageling yeah. her opponents. <laughs> I can see where your head's at there. I just think that she's the she is the player to beat. Yeah. She is phenomenal across the year. There's a reason why there's a number one next to her name. It means she's a damn good tennis player. Uh, and for Danielle Collins, uh, she said that this is her last time in Australia and she will be uh, retiring shortly. What legacy does she leave down under, uh, given she was a former runner-up? Well, down under, I would say, unfortunately, in front of the Australian audience, her legacy for herself is cut making it to the finals <laughs> but falling short, but to the rejoice of the Australian fans because it was Ash Barty who lifted the title against her in that final worldwide. She leaves a really lasting legacy as being a fiery competitor. And she probably did her best work here, do you think, mm. as opposed to everywhere else? I mean, that's something that she'll probably remember and, and love having spent time in Australia. Oh, there'll be fond memories. I think it comes as no surprise that she felt at home on those hard courts mm -hmm. because she grew up on them in America. Yeah. So not too dissimilar to the Australian hard courts. Shouldn't come as a surprise that she had most of her success here. One of the themes so far this tournament has been the return of the mums and one of them, Alina Svitolina, has just looked incredible. What's impressed you most about her return? Well, the fact that she had a baby. Yeah. I mean, I think that that is the most incredible thing that a, a woman can do is to give birth. My respects and hats off to her, but then to come back and show some almost career best form. Mm. I think she's nearly at that level that she was at before giving birth. Hats off. I mean... What else can I say? And if it plays out, as we all expect, it could be Svitolina up against Iga Svantec in the fourth round. What a match. Well, if giving birth <laughs> is a tough task, facing Iga is also, mm -hmm. but she's got a chance. She came so close to winning that title in mm -hmm. Auckland where she, she went to the wire with another tournament favourite in Coco mm -hmm. Goff. You can't write her out, can you? So many storylines to be written. John Millman, as always, appreciate your time, and we will see everyone tomorrow for another edition of The Morning Serve. Wide World of Sports is your home of the Australian Open. With highlights of every match of the AO, the on-court interviews, and every day with the morning serve, you'll be ahead of the game. So click that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing this Australian Open.